And here we go. Hunt Companion. People, people <laughs> crave that. I think you're supposed to do it three times. I crave it. Hunt Companion. Yeah. And Hunt Companion. Okay. There we go. Uh, it is... Hunt Companion. The Hunt Companion. <laughs> It'll sneak up on you. Yeah. It'll get you. Mm. It's October 17th. We're like in it at this point. Yeah. I kind of just driving here. It was feeling fall like. I was like, man, I'm in I'm in my happy place yeah. at this point. So yeah. it's coming out like a lot later. Yeah. It didn't get light till almost eight. I know. We've got that yeah. uh we got the whole rollback coming in a couple of weeks. That always throws your game off. Yeah. I hate that. Because then it gets dark at like five o'clock yeah. and you're like, what the fuck? Uh what is that? November It's the first Saturday in November. Okay. Yep. First Saturday in November, which this time would be the second or third. Is it? Yep. Okay. Yep. Reminder to everybody who is going to vote, which everybody should be voting. That's November 5th this year. For yep. some reason, Tuesday I, the 5th. I don't know why I thought it was always the third. And somebody said that the other day. And I'm like, mm -mm. Uh, it's always Tuesday, uh, first Tuesday in November. I was like, I'm, we're supposed to be in Iowa that day. Mm -hmm. So we did our mail in. We did our mail ins today. You can just go online and do, do like request a mail in ballot mm -hmm. and they'll send that to you. So I mm -hmm. guess that's what we're going to have to do either that or. Yep. postpone the trip, right? I mean, if you're a Democrat, you get two mail-ins. No, yeah, I'm just kidding. Send you, <laughs> yeah, that's on a per-request basis. Yeah. Uh, shit. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we did that. Uh, actually, I take that back. I think the I think the rollback is, it's technically Sunday night, or Saturday night, Sunday morning. So it'll be whatever, that third going into the fourth is when the set your clock's Not back, what it's going to be. Yep. Okay. Third's a good day to be in the woods. Yep. I killed a buck on the third. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so it's the seventeenth. We are we're coming out of this this massive cold front. We had a really really big cold front coming in. I think it seemed like your weather in Ohio was a lot better than my weather here. Like, seemed like it. Yeah. We we ended up just Our, being, ours was textbook. I mean, you could, you couldn't ask for any better. Yeah. yeah, it was perfect. We ended up just hanging in this like low pressure system, which was just like misty and nasty. It was cold, but it was just like rainy really? and your sun never popped. I mean, like. Maybe for 30 minutes here or there. Mm. Yeah, dude. Our, ours was textbook. It was exactly what you want. We had... Uh, what was before? What what was happening like uh, last week? We had like highs highs in the high 70s. It was warm. Mm -hmm. Rainy or no? No. Just hot. Just hot. Yeah. And then we got... It kind of was that. I mean, it was raining even yesterday. It rained a, a better part of the morning. We didn't really have a rain front come in when the temperature dropped. That was what was weird about it. Uh -uh. Yeah, it just dropped. It just dropped, dropped overnight mm -hmm. into... That was into Monday. It's today, Thursday. Yeah, it was yeah. into Monday. That's right. So Friday, Saturday. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm sorry, Saturday, Sunday. Because mm -hmm. I went up Sunday and mm -hmm. did, did my speed scouting mission. Yep. I think on the last time I was like, I'm going to go hunt this tracks buck. Yep. Of course, I haven't hunted them yet. Uh, wow, yeah it's, yeah, been, yeah. it's been a long couple days here. It's been a long couple days. No, I didn't days. hunt them. Uh, wow, yeah. It's been, it's been a three day. I, I I did kind of a three day binger. It's been a whirlwind. I've been working hard during the days, but then sneaking out. So hardly working. <laughs> I've been working. That that Sunday, I ran up and did that speed scouting around the tracks, mm -hmm. and it was warm. I was like, I'm just gonna. I gotta go yep. find him. Yep. I did bump a mature buck, not him. Mm -hmm. Found another three year old one. I was on the phone with you. Mm -hmm. Just never had the right wind to go hunt that yep. that property. It was just northwest from there. Um, but then that cold front did come in, and then three days in a row. You what? had like, well, the first Tuesday night it rained on you because it also, that's when I was in the stand and I about died of hypothermia. Yeah, I was in the blind though. Yeah, it was not fun. It was a quickie. I was not in a quickie. It was in a prolonged rain event and then eventually sleet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got a little bit of sleet too. When I say, well, it fell short because I was in the blind. <laughs> Your dad and Dale were not. <laughs> yeah, somehow I picked the blind and the other two guys were, mm -hmm. were in a tree, but uh Man, they did move. Uh, yeah, so, Tuesday night was so when you been, saw those mature bucks. Right? What did I hunt Monday night? Because East Twin, Easy Gay. Where did I hunt Monday night? Uh, is Monday night when you went right off the tracks and didn't see anything? No. Mm, no, Sunday I scouted it. And then yeah. Monday. Monday you went into where you bumped that three-year-old. Didn't you go back in and sit up there thinking he was going to come back through? No. Oof. Oh, you didn't hunt Monday. Didn't hunt Monday. You went to Jed's. No, it was Sunday. Sunday. It was Sunday. Went to the cookout. Yeah. Hmm. Monday. Apparently, that never happened. Apparently, <laughs> so, not much action. Well, I didn't see a shooter. Yeah. So, f oh, 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 uh, shell pit. Oh, okay. Yeah, I hung the shell pit. Mm hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, w whatever. D didn't see what I wanted to see over there, but uh, 
so that would have been Tuesday night. I did. Yeah. So that, that was, we had this cold front come in. Here's where I started getting exciting. I had Lebrowski, that seven and a half year old six point, just like a trophy six point. He's probably pushing 130. Oh, know, yeah. Type, type deal. Framey. Just fra- old 240 pound deer. Super old deer. I mean, the oldest that I can recall hunting there. You yeah. Know, we just don't. It, Coincidentally, and if people like really follow the podcast, like we've talked about Lebrowski for since 20, probably 21. I mean, you know, 2020. 2020. Yeah. I, we picked, I first, I noticed him as a three year old. And like you guys have hunted him eh. a little bit. Eh, yeah. But he just keeps sliding because he's not ever a giant. That freaking deer travels a lot. I've seen him in a easily in a two and a half mile range. Yeah. Easily. This summer, we saw him. I saw him in velvet at the office, mm-hmm. which is about a mile to maybe a mile and a half from where I picked him up on Tuesday at 2 30 in the afternoon. 2 30 in the afternoon. <laughs> Coincidentally, coincidentally and i'm not we're, i'm not a moon guy but like this will make you consider it mm-hmm. uh not the red moon but brackets big on the vampire walk <laughs> have you heard this no so what he claims is uh f- there's a 48 hour window prior to the f- peak full moon mm-hmm. which was yet yeah, which, which was, was hunter moon t- which is today yes. which today? is today the today. 17th mm-hmm. i don't know if it's hunter moon or what but mm-hmm. today is the full is moon hunter moon. Mm-hmm. and he's like in a, within a 48 hour window your big bucks will walk they'll daylight and mm. what, wouldn't you know, I saw three mature bucks that mm-hmm. day mm-hmm. on their feet. Lebrowski at 2.30 in the afternoon for the first time. I think it's the first time he's been on the property since last winter. Wow. Shows up at 2.30 in the afternoon, crushes a scrape, mm-hmm. came in on the same scrape that Brian's four-year-old did yep. last year. When they move into the property, they seem to like, that's the, that's the entry that's point. That's the entry point. Mm-hmm. Crush that. Old Ellis Island there. Yeah. And so, yeah, okay. Nice. Right, like that. Yeah, nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, or uh, Mexican border, if you will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if, just, they, if you're undocumented. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I don't check them as they come in. They yeah. just come in. They just come, come in. Come and goes, please. Right over the wall. So, right there, plan was made. I was like, we're, I wasn't going to, my, I wasn't going to hunt that deer. Mm-hmm. But, and even when I was in the blind, that guys were like, would you shoot that deer? I was like, yeah, I would shoot that deer. Lebrowski? Yeah. Yeah. Da- Dale and I, uh, put a plan together. We're like, we're going to go surround him. It's just a different kind of trophy. Yeah. So hunted East twin that night mm-hmm. thinking he would pop up in there. Sure enough, five fifty, five whatever. He shows up at the easy gate. Mm-hmm. And Which like, kind of makes sense. in in I guess, yeah. In retrospect. He just, there's no rhyme or reason to what that deer does. And he never does it twice. No. Cause then, yeah, you sat easy gate last night. No show. Yeah. But so in the meantime, I went and hunted. That was the night it rained at mm-hmm. whatever, four o'clock. Mm-hmm. And I saw two shooters yep. uh, get up out of that ditch mm-hmm. that, uh, I guess this will drop after that. So Nick, that thing you're putting together there, I, hung, video. I hung a week or two ago, mm-hmm. week and a half ago on the side of the food plot where this ditch is at that they're coming out of. And I didn't expect him to be betting there, but I, he did get up and, and worked out of there. So mm-hmm. I, I noted that, but was like, well, you know, they probably bet lots of places. Sure. So where I was hunting at the East Twin is right across the food plot from that Mm -hmm. with an opposite wind from what I hunted a week ago. So blowing in a favorable direction. Sure enough, whatever that was, six o'clock, them suckers pop right out of there. Two mature bucks. I think it's a four-year-old and a five-year-old together. Mm -hmm. Got up and just walked right out across that food plot on the opposite end of it. And whatever, out of desperation or I was like, you know. They weren't going to hang around. You know what I mean? They were working yep. through the food plot, moving off somewhere. I snort wheezed at them, thinking they might get fired up enough to come hit the scrape in front of me. Mm-hmm. And they just didn't, you know. And we'll probably drop that content, what, the Friday coming up? Yeah, next week. Yep. It would be cool. Yeah, you'll when see that you, footage. Yeah, when you taught that together, <clears throat> we were talking about a pre-podcast, like, that Buck's demeanor is like, he, he wasn't there to kick anyone at, one's ass, uh-uh. you know? And they're you together. Just, they're, they're chilling. Yeah, you could just tell he was just kind of relaxed and just kind of working his way through. Like, if his was, like, bristled up, laid back, he would have committed. I saw two bucks last night together, too. Did you? Uh, it's about, the, it's still that time. It's, I mean, it's mid-October. We're not talking about late October here. It's like, you know, in the next week or two, they're, they're not going to like each other as much. But, like, right now, I mean, they'll, they're going to bang heads and fight, but, like, it's... It's not out yeah, of like cool. yeah. pure aggressiveness yet. Yeah, it's interesting to see them together. Yep. I mean, that's a four and a five year old buck that, and they've got you know mm-hmm. both both of them have broken brow times, so they broke yeah. them on each other or on you know rubbing or I don't know. But I mean, when I killed that buck on October twenty third, I believe he was with 
three, was with three three, three bucks. Yeah, in a single file line coming down. He was the last one in line. And they were all bedded together. That's interesting. Yeah, I'd love to know if there's been a study that's been done on like bachelor groups extending into fall. Dude, that deer, uh, I killed a deer on November third, several years ago. A three year old that mm-hmm. was with another buck too, mm-hmm. and yeah. they were just like milling around, hitting scrapes. I mean, it, the at the end of the day, like these. They're social animals, right? Yeah. I mean, like they're, but yeah, at some point they're kind of hanging on their own. I think like real old mature bucks and probably demeanor, like they, they don't, they're isolated. That Lebrowski buck was by himself yeah, as they far don't, as I could tell. He's just grumpy and old. He don't want to be around anybody anymore. Mm-hmm. But I think some of these other bucks, especially those three and four year olds, like this is just a social type of thing. I'd be you grumpy know? if I had a rack like that too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like yeah. having a small wiener your whole life. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, it got bigger a little bit for a while, but then <laughs> that's why he's out daylight, and he's like, "Somebody just please shoot me at this point." Like, can we just end this thing? Yeah, like, ah, no, we'll let you go another year, dude. I'll tell you what, man. I have not, you know, flung an arrow yet, mm-hmm. but I've seen that five year old three times. Mm-hmm. That single brow. Mm-hmm. Yep. I've seen. I've. I think I've had more shooter encounters this year in Ohio at this point in the season than than I ever have. Well, when we talked about it the other day, uh, you know, again, rewind four or five years ago, a lot of deer were leaving your property as the season kind of progressed. It seems like there's a lot more coming into the property now, yeah. which is a good feeling. Yeah. Yeah. A very good feeling. Well, it's just, yeah, I mean, it's the work paying off and you start to see it like it's mm-hmm. not all at once, but like last year, Brian's bucks just started moving in. It, and so there's been a transition over the past seven years that we've been working on the farm mm-hmm. or the first year or two, we, you know, tried a food plotter. I mean- it's been getting progressively like we're having more and more of an impact. And now instead of them, and we do still have bucks that will kind of shift out, you know, I'll kind of lose them for a while, but definitely more than we ever used to. I've got bucks that I expect to move in Mm -hmm. because we have the food. We've got better cover. We're figuring out how to hunt it better. And that the farm is definitely getting better. The highest concentration of our mature animals is dead center at the focal point of where we're doing all that work. Yep. Not by coincidence. No, I don't think it is. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, you know, I think if there was anything, um, I don't know if I want to say like just disappointing about it, but like that, there was a lot, lot of expectation around that cold front coming in. Um, and like I said, where we you were, see at, Wanky and Jordan didn't see a deer and two yeah. sets. They went and hunted two spot and didn't see nuts, anything. Man. Yeah, I mean, I I hunted. Well, Harlan shot a doe on Monday, Tuesday. I sat in the stand and got like drenched to the bone. End up seeing a button buck or two fawns and a couple of those. <laughs> yeah, I, would, I was up like on the top of the mountain, just like questioning my entire life. Um, and then mainly the last two days, I've just been putting boots on the ground, finding new sign and shifting cameras or putting up new cameras on the mountain. Um, and like I've got some bucks on camera. It's just, you know, we were kind of talking about it earlier. It's like, the amount of sign that I'm seeing and like what I would consider like really good buck sign, like mature buck sign. Um, just, I don't have those deer on camera. Like I'm not expecting to catch 150 inch mountain deer on camera, but I am expecting to catch a four or five year old, like solid eight point on camera. And it just seems like I'm getting a lot of two and three year olds or younger at, right now. Like they just, I don't know. They're in there. The sign is for sure not being laid down by a two or three year old. I just, I don't know. They're just, uh, they didn't show over this cold front. In fact, today, they, how do you know? I mean, how are you, how are you distinguishing between sign? Yeah. Um, I mean, part of it is just kind of intuitive. Try to deduct down to what you're looking at. Like if I'm, if I'm finding, we talked about that one rub, like wasn't a bent over tree tall was tall. Hmm. Now, given I haven't seen any bucks in that, I just put that camera up yesterday. So maybe there is a really good one there. Um, but even the other one that I put up, I've got, you know, probably a three-year-old eight point that's 17, 18 inches wide. Could he have made the rubs that I'd seen? Probably. But, you know, just from looking at kind of the the aggressiveness around those trees and stuff, like, I don't know, maybe. But it just, I would expect that to be a, a more dominant deer in that area. Mm. <laughs> yeah, man, it's interesting, like... <sighs> I'm seeing sign pop. It's not that they're, it's not that they're not hitting my like mock scrapes, mm-hmm. but they're just they're laying down just as much of their own. Mm-hmm. 
you know, and it's like you would a lot. you would not know it unless you go out and, and look. Like no, I mean that's that's a big one. I mean I I have cameras on mock scrapes from September that have basically gone cold, and I've got there and there's a giant scrape fifty yards behind it. Yeah, you know, and so they're just not coming through there. In fact, two. I say two. One of the bucks that I've been hunting since the start of the season, and I've only sat him once, but he, and it's because I just missed some opportunities early that I should have sat for him. But I mean, he, that deer's completely vanished, like just gone off the map. The other deer that have been with him are there. He's just off the map, you know. And I don't know if he's just skirting a camera and hitting a different scrape, or if he's shifted. You know, as these re- we talked about these red oak acorns starting to dry up a little bit. They're definitely still crushing. Let yep. me ask you this: I heard the other day somebody saying you know that uh white oaks germinate in the fall like when they fall Mm -hmm. but that red oaks don't germinate until the spring oh i don't know i don't know if that's a fact and if that's the case like does that mean that they're edible Uh, all the way through the year like we talked about like well they're gonna rot and like not be good anymore i thought they would rot out just from being on the ground and moisture they're still crushing ours like i can see on the gas line there's a Mm -hmm. Red oak up there, and that's where all the deer are at. They're yep. still just hammering them. Yeah, I mean, I'm finding fresh tops, and uh, they're just, it's kind of, I feel like what's on the ground is what's on the ground, like very sporadic yeah. drops at this point. Yeah. I guess my question is, will, it, will the acorns on the ground stay good until they're gone? That's, I'm not sure. I, I don't know that answer. Uh, eat one of red oaks? Yeah. yeah. Uh, germinate in the spring after a period of cold stratification. So, so I mean, they can't rot. And then still germinate. No, right? it sounds like it would be like a switchgrass, which is like a hard seed where it needs that cold to crack to then germinate in the spring. So yeah, it says when to collect ask, collect acorns in the fall. Mm-hmm. Uh, da, 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 da. Do they need that cold to crack open like a like a hard switchgrass seed would? In order so, to yeah, how would you test that? How would you like? Uh, the question, I guess, is like how long does it after stay, like palatable and yeah, stuff does on it the stay ground. Palatable. Yeah, exactly. If that if that nut stays intact because it's not cracking from hard freezes, then yeah, I would assume it still is palatable. It doesn't change. When to expect germination? Uh, they said can germinate in four to six weeks. Is that what you're looking for? Like staying. No, because it would it, if it it's the stratus stratification. Like if it needs that cold stratification, that's saying that like from now until hypothetically December January, it's not going to be cold enough to freeze and crack that thing to start a process. So it would be January February whatever that cracks, then the germination occurs in the spring four to six weeks, mm-hmm. and so like March April is when it would actually throw a root and germinate. <laughs> So I don't know, like, you know, maybe there's just like a prolonged food source in the woods this year that doesn't really. That's, I mean, that's critical knowledge. So, I mean, that, you know, if, if you're not hunting other food sources or you don't have other food sources, which in a lot of places I don't, I'm, I'm hunting acorns. Yeah. Well, as far as like where your mature bucks like might be, you know, I I hunted a a Nebraska water hole and I could see a big bean field last night and, uh, I mean, I saw 15 does mm-hmm. and uh five ish bucks you know n- no matures but mm-hmm. uh i mean they they came out and browsed in those brassicas for a while and, and rye is in mm-hmm. there too and then they basically moved over into the beans mm-hmm. and then eventually filtered out of there i mean i so could see they, they were eating the pods i assume right the i'm gonna off? assume pods but i mean there's still some leaves it's mm-hmm. the it's the beans that i planted so they're mm-hmm. you know stay green the longest yeah, yeah. But that would explain, you know, what those bucks are. Mm-hmm. Dude, they're just smart. Like, I, I mean, having seen those two come out of that ditch, mm-hmm. I'm like baffled that I'm not. I have three cameras, like on the Easy Gate, on the East Twin, and on the Tin Shed Gas Line, and I'm like, not on. That. I should, and, and I've got pictures of both of them at mm-hmm. some point or another, but not. I mean, if they're betting there, yeah, not I've seen them come out of there both times. I've hunted it. Yeah, not consistently. I don't know if they're just avoiding it or... I mean, I think that's what it... You know, and that's maybe where I was going on the the mountain there is like, I'm not saying that you won't get a picture of them, but I do think that they learn to avoid certain things, whether it's from our scent presence or it's from something with the cellular camera or whatever. 
I do think in any camera, like I'm, I, Chris and I were from GSM were talking the other day and I said, man, I, I still, even though like something might be up with the frequency and cell cameras and stuff like that, I do think that, you know, even SD cameras, like I, I think that deer see that IR flash from a camera as well as we see like the flash from like our flashbacks and stuff. Like I think their, their eyes light up with that IR flash too. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, think about how much illumination happens in a picture from that IR. But for us, we don't see any of that, right? It's it's too far off our vision spectrum. But for them, being able to see better in the dark, I think they're, it, it looks the same from a flash standpoint. <clears throat> Maybe. It's hard to know. It's hard to know because, you know, I gave you that example yesterday of, like, I went out and put th some flashbacks. So, so these are the new... Uh, stealth cam mm -hmm. uh flashbacks they're called mm -hmm. and i and I, i've deployed a bunch of them i put one out uh whatever at this on the scrape and the first night uh, i got two four four year old or older bucks mm -hmm. it's a good spot uh this was like i don't know october f october 1st or maybe, maybe slightly before that okay mm -hmm. and and then they disappeared like stopped getting pictures of them there and i was like hmm you know and it was the first time we ever used those flashback cameras they have the white flash and so we wanted to see like man do they have more of an effect and i started thinking like hmm maybe maybe that wigged them out a little bit i you know i don't know but then two nights ago one of those deer just walks right down there and plops down right in front of it and is and is bedded there for like 15 minutes mm -hmm. you know at at dusk or at, just after dusk so it's flashing at him and it didn't seem to bother him Hmm. <clears throat> so I don't know. I don't know what to think about it. Yeah. I mean, I do think that it's, it's individual. Like I had a deer literally, I had a, it was probably a one year old buck bed down and get 150 pictures of that flashback on him last night. He just slept there yeah. and just, just kept going off like 150. <laughs> He's like, Did you guys hear that lightning storm last yeah. night? Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. I, I, at some point he was probably like having a seizure and, uh, <laughs> but I have other bucks and especially these mountain deer that I just think, you know, they're just remote creatures. Like, you know, I've set them up, um, in September, I've like, I got a picture of a mature buck coming to work this scrape and I was in his bedroom. So maybe I was too close, but I got him on camera and I've never seen that deer again. Like one, one, one or two pictures that, that series and then gone, like never again. Mm -hmm. I, I think some of those deer are very sensitive to cameras in general, whether it's flash cameras, IR cameras, cellular cameras, yeah. what I just think that there's, they, you know, if they're more isolated type creatures and they're not, ex you know, experiencing, you know, any kind of interaction, like whether it's tractors on a farm or it's vehicles on a road, like, you know, that deer that I just talked about, I mean, he's a mile and a half in from any road. Like he, he probably never engages with anything, you know, people wise. So the moment something like that happens, especially tight to where he was probably betting, he was like, no, screw this. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm out. I'm not saying he's like, gone gone he probably just shifted but he's not he's like yeah i'm not coming back at some point they will because they get stupid in the rut yeah well and that's probably the the shift here so today's the 17th yeah if you're listening to this nick quid, 20th 20th 20. 10 20. yeah so i mean at least where we're at it looks hot uh like you know yep all next week this coming weekend and i it's gonna start to get back into a high of 60s i think next thursday friday so from 70s to 60s maybe I was looking at Illinois because we were talking about going out there. It doesn't look good. Okay. At, at least through Sat next Saturday, it's like th it does drop from like yeah, well, seventy five I mean. to sixty eight. Then it goes right back up to seventy four. Okay. Okay. Well, regardless, at, at some point here, it's going to start get more about terrain. Yep. And I don't know exactly when that is, but it's, it really is when they start cruising. Cruising. You know, when mm -hmm. they start covering ground. You know, I think it's that twenty. Uh, for me, it's always been that twenty fourth ish time frame. Yeah. Uh, usually if you're in like Ohio, Pennsylvania, um, probably Illinois, Wisconsin and Michigan for sure. Like that 23rd to 26th, I would say the first does are going into estrus in your area. Um, I've got one in Pennsylvania if she's still alive and mainly cause we haven't killed her, but, uh, like clockwork around the 25th or 26th of October, I'll have bucks chasing her on my property. Oh yeah, dude, I've got a pretty decent, I mean, I, I don't know if I'd call it a front, but like, <clears throat> Uh, this coming weekend is going to get up into and even into early next week. Like Tuesday is the high of 77. Like it's going to be 80 yep. degrees next Tuesday. Yep. And then by Thursday, it's going to drop down to a high of 61. Mm. Yeah, that's good. So I got like a 20 degree temperature drop. Mm-hmm.
So I may squeak a few days in before we get to head to, to Illinois. Illinois. So I'll head back mm-hmm. and do two or three more days around the 24th, 5th, 6th mm-hmm. in Ohio. Mm-hmm. And then hopefully there's some kind of, let's see. It looked like rain on Saturday in Illinois. So I'm hoping after that there's some front, front coming. Oh, yeah. I mean, dude, there's the front. It's the same one. 24th, 5th. And then it goes right back up, doesn't it? Not yet. Mm. Uh Oh, yeah. Yeah, it does. It goes back up to 74 on Saturday, you're right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not... I mean, it, it at that time, it's timing's we're gonna get We're, we're going to get one there. Yeah. We'll, we'll, I bet it rains on that 26th or 27th, mm-hmm. and then we'll catch it right after. Mm-hmm. Right before Halloween. Yeah. That would be the plan. So, uh, you know, if you're listening to this on the 20th, it's kind of like, you know, uh, as crazy as it seems, I we have quite a few people write us and say they listen to the podcast and they're successful because of it. I don't know how. Uh, <laughs> like I did the opposite. So. Uh, um, it's a pretty big mystery. <laughs> uh, but if you're listening to this on the 20th, uh, between now and I would say the next uh, Hunt Companion. Hunt Companion. Thank you. Uh, I would say is, is one of my favorite times to be on a scrape. Uh, I think it's very patternable, mature bucks at this point. Uh, you're on the brink of the first dose coming into estrus, if not towards the end of this week, having the first dose coming to estrus, like towards the 26th, 27th. And, uh, yeah, I just think it's a really good time to get on a mature buck prior to what I would consider the rut breaking loose. And, and I say that because... But the rut's just unpredictable. I mean, you kill a lot of deer during the rut, but if you're trying to like get on a specific buck and pattern them, really, really difficult at that point. Yeah. So this is this is kind of the last week for me of like just jumping on a pattern, pick a scrape, any pick scrape. a scrape, and just uh, hunt them. And I would say also if you haven't, and maybe Bracket and Don Higgins and people will disagree, I'm hunting mornings at this point. Game over at mm. this. I'm going. I'm going balls deep uh, this week. Mm. Yep. I'm not waiting until November. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting until uh, probably October 25th. I don't think... That would be this week, if you're listening to this. Yeah, well, next, whatever. To the Saturday, end of it. Whenever I'm talking mm-hmm. about going back out. So, yeah, I may hunt some mornings. I I think it's uh, at least where I'm at. I mean, if you're on um, public or whatever, you know, it's it's kind of like... Big woods and big cares? woods and Give stuff, it a shot. I think you... Yeah. When, it, when it's cold, you know what I mean? Right now, they're not cruising. No. You know, that would be my argument against it. But when it's cold, if it's very, if it's really cold in the morning, they will just take more time, mm-hmm. you know, yep. to get back to their thing. So it's just bed food at this point still. Yeah. So I'm not going to hunt mornings at our farm until like the 25th and there's just no, yep. I, I can't justify it, but let's do this. Cause it is hunt companion and we'll give, uh, we'll give it, we'll give a nugget just as an update here on the CJ Alexander thing. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll go into more detail on it at some mm-hmm. point, but like, uh, everybody, and their brother has wrote seen us. it. Obviously, there was like an outdoor life article. <laughs> I don't know if he. I didn't actually read the article, but yeah, I don't read. But uh, CJ did text me that day uh-huh. uh, before. Did you see he issued us an, an apology? He issued us an apology. Mm-hmm. No, on social media, yeah, I got a bunch of people. Have well, sent he it he to texted me. me and apologized, and I sent it to he you. He put it in his story. Oh, well, cool. Uh, basically, sounds like the consensus. Well, he and I'm going off what he texted me, and I assume that this. You know, the, the article came out later that day, so I assume mm-hmm. they match up, but you can tell me if it doesn't. But it uh, sounds like he took a plea deal for, okay, uh, meaning they had enough evidence and like could have continued on a trial. Sounded like or it was 14 charges he was found guilty something of. Something like that. Yeah, of like the 23, I think he was yep. indicted on. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> I, I believe that he, so he's admitting guilt. Mm-hmm. He's admitting guilt um, in... I don't know how far we got on it today. We, we got a couple minutes here, but mm-hmm. it, it sounds like the uh, what, what's the word the the uh, the punishment the mm-hmm. the punishment yeah verdict the ver no. no the verdict is innocent or guilty which I don't know if there Sent- was one because he took a plea deal so, but the sentence was yeah he's got ten years with no license can't buy a license for ten years okay in Ohio and I assume that applies to if it, the pack law maybe every state gets submitted yep. Uh, five years of probation. So mm-hmm. just straight up probation. I'm on probation. Mm-hmm. Uh, some sort of program to go along with that. Alcoholics uh, Anonymous. Like, yeah, like a <laughs> big bucks an- anonymous. Yeah. I'd like to be part of that group. <laughs> Buckaho- Buckaholics. And I think he's got a fine of about $40,000. 40000 I think so. I mean, that's like bankruptcy for him, right? 
Uh, I think it can be paid over the 10 year time Ugh. frame of no license. And that can be shortened if he pays it off before. So that. no jail time. Because that was no a rumor time. a lot of people were throwing at me. They're like, yeah, get him on when he gets out of jail. I'm like, you got jail time? Yeah, no jail time as far as I know. But mm -hmm. he did, uh, and I think this is public at this point, He that deer was killed off the property that everybody thought it was. The DA's property. The DA, uh, whatever. I don't want to mix that up. But like, Family, yeah. Not his sister's property, which is what was claimed. So Correct. It seems like there is some... St still some unknowns about whether or not he may have had verbal permission uh, I mean, uh, not I, from like the landowner who ended up reporting him, but from like a family member of the landowner. I don't know who reported him. I don't know. Yeah. I think the state took it on themselves to investigate. I don't think that the landowner on the property that was killed was ever involved. I mean, I think they would have had to have been because uh -huh. that would have been, otherwise it was legal, right? He just didn't have permission to mm -hmm. hunt on the property. Yeah. And it's so, the state's right to pursue that. Yeah. But the landowner would have to say he didn't have permission to hunt on my property. And whether that ever, I don't know. I don't know if he does have to say that or they can ask CJ produce writ written permission. And if he can't, then. Yeah. But I think they would have to check with the other landowner. Like, they, and I'm sure they did. They probably mm -hmm. reached out to him. It, I mean, if he was a DA, like I'm assuming he was involved somehow. It doesn't sound like there was a lot of involvement. It sounds like basically an unwillingness to be involved. Yeah, he was just like, I don't know who this I don't is. Want any part I didn't, of this. I didn't mm -hmm. give him permission, mm -hmm. and that was probably it. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, it sounds like there's more than one land. It's not just like the mm -hmm. DA owns the property. It's owned by like an LLC, and there's mm -hmm. like two or three people that own it. One of them, that's I think what CJ is still yeah saying that wanting he may to have say had is verbal. he may or may not have had verbal permission, which is illegal. That's not good enough. Did they say? Did he kill multiple bucks yep. and illegally? Yep. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. And, and so whether we, well, but if he had the verbal permission, right, then kind of an interesting thing because he's killed multiple bucks and nobody made a big deal about the exactly. other ones. Well, exactly. Until he killed. Because it was one. never a thing until he killed the, the biggest buck in the world type deal, you yeah. know, and then came on and promoted it all. And then mm. it became a thing. Mm -hmm. So it's, I have sympathy in that it, it's a situation that like people could, you could find yourself in. Sure. But also, very clearly, laws were broken. Yep. Whether or not it was before and, and choosing to hunt on that property, I don't know. Or afterwards, and when like, you yeah, when you take it to another, yeah, and you, and you clearly it was staged, story. created the thing, mm -hmm. lied about where it was taken, mm -hmm. clearly against the law. Yeah. That that was uh, that's a hard line. Mm. So I mean, the the question is, and it you know, <clears throat> let's let's blow this hunt companion up from a comment side. Is a lot of people are like, are you gonna have them back on? Mm -hmm. My response so far to the Instagram people is like, and this is no offense to CJ, it's like, ah, CJ, I just don't know if I want to give you any more attention. Like, yeah. uh, I would love to hear the story, but I don't really know if I want to give you any more attention. Uh, we have tried to get the Ohio DNR to connect us with the investigators to have them on, yeah. which I'd be in full favor of. Love to know on the prosecution side, like how that went. Because yep. yeah, it's over now at this point, right? Like he can't be tried again. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's case closed. It's case deal. closed as far as I know. Sentencing's so been issued. Like Both parties should be able to talk freely. So, yeah, I think the only way I would have CJ back on is if he was willing to... And, and I, you know, in fairness, I, I can't believe what he... You know, he, he's lied to us at this point. So it's like, I, I can't believe you. But I do want to hear if he's willing to share with us like the details of what actually happened. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I don't... I could care less about giving people... It's fine, fine. Have the attempt... You know what I mean? Yeah, that, that the the whole platform discussion is like my, well, yeah, my sole criteria for having people on the podcast is am I interested? Yeah, well, and I yeah I don't <laughs> care I guess necessarily about that. It's just like how do I know I'm getting the truth again? Well, you don't. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, which is it's kind of but the, sitting across the table from me eye to eye is maybe one of the best ways to <laughs> he did it once to find it. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and we left that with questions. Sure, with questions. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, the, the, I think the shittiest part about it, because somebody wrote us and I was like, man, I think the worst part is two things. Uh, that deer now has an asterisk against it. Like that deer sh for years to come should have been on a pedestal of like, this is unfreaking believable. And now it's just going to be tainted forever. Yeah. Forever. Like nobody, nobody will even think about that deer <laughs> in five years. They won't. Yeah. 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 You're right. You're right. Also, though, part of me is like, it's just a deer. Like, it, yeah, don't get me I wrong. Mean, it's a pinnacle deer. I get it. Yeah, it's world-class deer, but I'm like, it is just a deer at the end of the day. They all are. 
Yeah, but I mean, there's deer that are envious, a Hanson buck and stuff. They're they're you know even even the I get it. I the, get it. The mystery around a Rompola buck. It's like that deer continues to live in in you know mystery. Yeah, mystery and infamy of like we don't know if it's real or fake, mm-hmm. but like there it was, and it's you know whatever. Thirty years later, and we're still talking about the damn thing. Well, this deer will forever get more publicity because of the controversy around it. I think it'll fade fast. People just don't tolerate it. It'll just, it'll, it'll fade into the cracks of history. I disagree. Well, I mean, maybe as much as any of those deer, but like it undoubtedly has gotten more attention than it ever would have if it was completely legal. Maybe. Undoubtedly. Maybe. The only reason people care. Right now, I think it is. The only reason, do you think anybody would care about Ron Paul's buck if, Without the controversy, yeah, because I think it would have been I one of the biggest so. deer ever. I couldn't if even. It was real. I couldn't have even told you, which is not some of the biggest deer. <laughs> the only deer that I could rattle off right now are the ones that have controversy wrapped around them. Yeah, to a point. Like, I mean, I don't know. Like this. Ho- that's the argument. There's no such thing as bad publicity. The Hollywood buck in Virginia. Never heard of it. Oh, it, that's the cemetery buck. Yeah, and it's like I've heard about it because there was a big court case and yeah, it was illegal. But I mean, it'll and it was a giant deer, but it'll just fade into like nothingness. Yeah, exactly. So, but, oh. but I mean, you'll remember. Oh, oh, oh. you'll remember. Well, the they Jor- all kind of do the Jordan buck, the point. Hanson buck. Mm. Yes, because yeah. I guess so because they're legal and because there are the top one, two, three, whatever that mm-hmm. they always get referenced because it become a benchmark. Mm-hmm. So from that capacity, yeah, maybe it it has it doesn't have that mm-hmm. effect. Mm-hmm. But whatever. The other Interesting. Side, the other negative side is like Ohio DNR now forever has that rack. Yeah, that's a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it'll just be paraded around at you know one eight hundred poachers booth mm. for the foreseeable future. It was here though. We've got video evidence and got there's, scratches. there's scratches on the table from still, it. So. I can still feel it. Mm. <laughs> still feel it. Mm. <laughs> so, all right. So anyways, that's, that is where we're at with We'll it. go into more detail at some point. Yeah. We just, I don't know what the, the next steps are going to be on it, but that's our, that's our public address. You've heard it here first on the Hunk Opinion. And we'll see you next week. It's take me. Oh.